In this video we will implement a slider inside Angular without using any additional libraries. So how we will plan to implement our slider inside Angular? As you can see here, I already prepared for us an empty Angular application and we don't have anything inside it. What we want to do now, we want to render our slider and provide slides from the outside, which actually means here, let's create a new component image slider and we must provide inside a list of our slides. So this is just a property from our app component and we are closing here our image slider. But most importantly is that our slider is a component and when we are talking about CSS our component should just take the width and height of its parent, it should not be fixed at height, because in this case we can't reuse it everywhere. This is why what I want to do, I want to wrap our image slider with a container with some styles which we are providing from the parent. This is why here div style here with width, for example 500 pixels, we also need here height, let's say 200 pixels, and margin 0 auto, so it will be centered. Now here let's define our slides, but actually I want later to create an interface for every single slide. But for now let's just say that this is our array, which is an array of objects. And as you can see here I already prepared our list of objects with URL and the title. Why it is not? Not just array of strings with such URLs of our images, because actually you might later need some additional information. And this is much easier to add this information if you have here objects and not just strings. For example here we can provide not only a URL but also a title. And now you must say, ok, but from where we are getting these images? And actually I already prepared these images for our slider and you can take it from the source code of this project from the description box below. Now we are ready to start creating of our module, because actually we don't want just to create a component, we want to fully isolate our feature inside an additional module. This is why let's name this module image slider and not just slider, so it is not that generic. And here is the name image slider dot module dot ts. Now inside we must register our ng module and provide inside our imports. And what we want to import here is at least common module, so we can use standard things from the Angular. And here I want to export our new class, which is image slider module. So our module is ready, but now I want to create an interface. As I already said, we have a slide, and it is really nice to define an interface for that. This is why inside our image slider, I want to create a new folder, which is called types, and inside let's define slide, dot interface dot ts. So this is the interface for a single slide. And here I want to export our interface, which is a slide interface. And as you already see inside our object we have a URL which is mandatory and it is a string, and we also have a title, it is mandatory and it is string. And now we can jump back inside our app component ts, and here we can write that this slide is actually a slide array. And as you can see here I am importing slide interface array. In this case here if we will just remove this title from this object we will get an error, because title is missing inside property and it is much safer than just an array. Now we must create our component inside image slider. This is why here let's create a new folder which is called components and a new folder for image slider. And we will just have for now just a single component. This is totally enough. And here I want to create our image slider dot component dot html and image slider dot component dot ts. And we also need some styling, so image slider dot component dot css. And actually this video is not about writing CSS, this is why I already prepared the whole CSS for the slider, and you can also take it from the description box below. This is why here inside our CSS I will just paste lots of styles for our slide, arrows, dots and the whole slider. And now let's create our component. So here inside image slider component yes, let's register our component and here we can create our selector, which is an image slider. Now here we also must provide a template URL, which will be image slider component HTML and here is style URLs, which is an array and we are providing inside our image slider component CSS. 
and after this we must export our class, which is an image slider. So our class is fully ready, now let's write something inside markup, at least image slider, so we can see that it is working. And I want to jump to the outside, because we must register inside our image slider module our new component. This is why here let's declare inside declarations our image slider. And as you can see here I made a typo in naming, actually inside our component it must be not image slider, but image slider component. And now here we can import inside declarations our image slider component from our components. And it is not enough we also want to export it, because we will use our image slider component outside to render a slider. And the last step that we must do, we must register this image slider module inside our app module. For this we can just add inside our imports image slider module. Now let's check if we have any errors, and inside console as you can see we have an error, because we didn't define slides, but we are providing them inside. This is why I want to jump back inside our image slider, components, component, and here we need to define an input. This is why here let's create an input, and we know that we are getting here array of slides. This is why here slide interface array, and by default we have an empty array. As you can see in console we don't have any errors, and now let's jump inside browser. And here our image slider was rendered and actually centered, which actually means we successfully created our module and component, and now we can start implementing our slider. And for our slider we just need a single property, and this is a current index. Why is current index? Because we must know what slide is active now, and all our slides inside the array are going with indexes. This is why here we can just set our current index to zero, and then we will just increment it. Now let's create a markup of our image slider. For this I will remove this text and write here that we have a div with class slider. And inside we want to render our arrows. This is why here we will have one more container, this is just a div with two arrows. And here we will have first of all div with class left arrow, and I will put here a utf8 arrow, and close the div, and I will copy paste this and change to right arrow, and here let's put an arrow to the right. After this container we must render a slide, this is why here div class slide, but it is not all, we also want here a style to render an image with background. This is why here I want to write ng style, and here we want to render a property background image, and here actually we need to write URL and then put a path. But this is not really comfortable to read, this is why I want to create additional function which will just get a URL of the current slide and render it here. This is why let's jump back inside our TS file and create here this function. For example we can name it get current slide URL and it must return for us a string. And here what we want to return is just an escaped string, and here we have our URL, then brackets, then quotes, and inside these quotes we want to put a URL for our current slide. And actually we have all our slides inside these slides, and here we can use this dot current index to get the current slide. And after this we can simply type dot URL, and we are getting our current URL of the slide. And now we can directly use this function inside our HTML. So here will be background image, get current slide URL, and it is much more readable. And after this let's close our div. But actually here I already see a small mistake inside my quotes. So here actually we must wrap in a single quote our background image, and then the whole ng style must be just a string with an object inside. Let's check if it's working. As you can see I have here an error inside console that ng style does not exist, because here I made a typo and it must be ng style. As you can see we don't have any errors, so let's check our browser. And now voila, our slider is successfully rendered. So here we can check our markup, and as you can see we have our div with the slider, and inside we have our arrows, 
this is this container with two arrows on the left and on the right. And after this we have a div with the slide, but here we want dynamically to set an image. This is why here we are using background image and we are providing our URL from the current image, which is successfully applied. Our next step will be to implement arrows logic. For this we can simply add click event on the left arrow and on the right. This is why let's create here additional function go to previous and we don't need to pass anything inside and here we have a click event which will be go to next. And now let's implement these functions inside our TS file. So here we already have our current index and we can simply increment it. So here we have a go to next function and we could just write plus one, but it won't work if we are already on the last slide. This is why we can write some logic. We can check here for the is last slide. And if we are on the last slide, then we will render the zero slide. This is why here we can just compare this current index and then this slide's length minus one. In this case, we know, okay, this is the last slide. And here we want to calculate our new index. And here we can check, okay, are we on the last slide? If yes, then it will be zero. In other case, it will be this current index plus one. And now we can simply assign the new value to our current index. So current index equals next index. And now we must do exactly the same with go to previous. So this is the void function and we want to know if we are on the first slide. So here is first slide and here we can simply check this current index is zero. And now let's calculate our new index. So if here we have a first slide, then we want to change it to the last slide. This is why here this slide's length minus one. In other case, this current index minus one. And after this, we can simply set our new current index inside current index. Let's check if it's working. I'm reloading the page and we're just clicking on the right. And as you can see, we're getting another image. We're clicking again and we have one more image, one more image, one more image. And then we're going to the zero slide. This was our first slide. And here I can click previous and we're going to the last slide which actually means we successfully implemented the logic of our arrows. But it is not all. Typically inside sliders you have dots on the bottom and you can jump to the direct slide. This is why we can jump inside our HTML component and after our slide we can render our dots. This is why here let's create a div with class dots container. Let's close this div and we want just to render a dot for every single slide. This is why here we just have a div within G4 and here we're looping through our slides. So here will be slide of slides and we have access to the slides inside the component and here we also must know the index. This is why here let's store our index inside our slide index. So here I will just close our div and inside I will render a symbol of the dot. Also we want to provide here a class which is called dot and we need a click event. And actually here we can create a new function, go to slide, and we must provide inside our slide index, which is an index inside this array of slides. And now it is time to implement go to slide functionality. And actually it will be super simple because here we're getting our slide index, which is a number, and we just set it inside our property. This is why it is a void function. And here inside our current index, we must simply set our slide index. Let's check if it's working. We don't get any errors here and let's reload our page. As you can see here, we're rendering five dots because we have five slides. Now I'm clicking, for example, on the last dot and we just directly render our last slide, which essentially means we successfully implemented dots functionality. So this is how you can implement a slider without any libraries inside Angular. And actually, if you're interested to know what is in GRX or how you can use it inside Angular world, make sure to check this video also.